Hi, I'm Barry Ritholtz. Welcome to The Compound. Today, I have an extra special guest. His name is Rick Ferry. You probably know him as the founder of Portfolio Solutions, uh, the firm he founded a few decades ago that at one point in time was managing about a billion and a half dollars. I know Rick from his writings, uh, from his work as a fighter pilot in the Air Force. Marine Corps. Marine Corps. Okay. Uh, why do I? I, 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 I don't say know fighter pilot. I mean, you I, can't get that wrong. Greg. I automatically go to uh, <laughs> Air Force, but you're right. Um, a Navy Marine fighter pilot. Yeah, that's better. Did you ever? No, did you Marine fighter pilot? You you uh, <laughs> flew a sixes. Did you ever do carrier landings? Yes, I did. A lot of carrier day and night. Really? Yes. So you were a serious pilot. Yeah, well, I'd like to think so. <laughs> to I'd live to tell about it. To say the least. <laughs> Rick also today hosts a really interesting podcast. The Bogleheads on Investing, where he's interviewed none other than Jack Bogle and a number of other really interesting people. His latest projects I'm going to tell you about, um, we'll, we'll talk about both of them. Let's start with Investment Solutions. This is your new consultancy. Tell us a little bit about Investment Solutions. Well, the name of the company is Ferry Investment Solutions, and uh, basically doing two things. I'm helping individual investors on an hourly basis with their portfolios to help them restructure. I'm not managing their portfolios, I'm just helping them. And then from there, they can go on and either do it themselves or I can help them find the appropriate advisor for them to pick it up after I help them restructure things. So and this is an hourly consulting basis, not an AUM fee or anything no, like that? No, it's just an hourly fee. And the other thing I'm doing is helping advisors, a lot of new advisors and advisors who want to go to the next level because of my years of experience. I'm also consulting with advisors to help them with their practice. So let's talk a little bit about that because you were previously at Smith Barney, and I recall the conversation you shared with me about pitching one Jamie Dimon <laughs> before he was uh, head of J.P. Morgan Chase about your idea for a low-cost investment um, portfolio management idea, and you got rebuffed and launched your own firm. Um, how is this experience you've had, how does that help RIAs today? What do you bring to the table for those folks? So I've been in the business for 30 years. As you said, I was in the brokerage industry for 10 of those and decided to leave and start the RIA, fee-based RIA managing investment portfolios, uh, and did that for 20 years and then sold the business uh, last year. Uh, so I've got a lot of experience not only in how to uh, run a practice and run a business and make it large, but I also have a lot of experience in working with different types of investors. And so I really understand both the investor mentality and the advisor mentality, and I understand the products, uh, the ETFs and the index funds. So I put it all together, and I think I have some interesting insights into how people can better their portfolios and how advisors can better their business. So let's talk about advisors for a minute. I've heard from a number of the larger uh, RIA, some of the more famous RIAs in the industry, and they're all talking about this apocalyptic um, consolidation that's coming any day now, coming down the road. What do you see the industry morphing into? How, how is our industry going to change over the next decade or two? Yeah, so I think that one of the things that are going to change is different fee structures, and we're already beginning to see this. Uh, the, traditionally, it's been based on assets under management, but we're beginning to see subscription-based fees, flat fees. I'm doing hourly, but I'm not managing money. And then we've seen also a decoupling where advisors are charging two different fees, one for anything but portfolio management and portfolio management. So I think that the trend is, going, is toward different fee structures, and we're seeing a lot of change there. Mm -hmm. Quite, quite interesting. Let's talk about the other project that you have uh, working, Core for Portfolios. Uh, this is a website. Tell us about it. Well, it's a free website. Basically, I came up with the idea of a Core for Portfolio about 10 years ago. It's just for index funds. And now, let me interrupt you. You have written a number of books on the art of asset allocation, and you have shared with the investing public a I was going to say a multiplicity, I don't know if that's even a real word, a ton of different core portfolios that anybody can literally open a book and say, oh, that sounds like what I need and imitate that portfolio. And that's what the website does. That's exactly right. But it's a really simplistic version of that. There's only four funds. And so what are, what are the four funds? Well, it depends on which portfolio. The classic one is a total U.S. stock market, uh -huh. total international. 
a little slice of real estate using REIT fund right. and a total bond fund. So that's These are all at Vanguard funds? Nope, don't have to be Vanguard. can be State Street, iShares, uh, J.P. Uh, Morgan. It could be uh, Schwab. It, 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 I'm using asset classes as an asset allocation, and then from there... You go to the next level, you can see the different funds that are available at different right. places. And, and each of these have a different... So if you want a REIT, you have a slew of choices, and they're not all the same, but within an asset allocation pretty close. model, they're pretty interchangeable. Pretty, pretty close. U.S. large cap, international... Pretty close. Okay. And then you're talking now with the fee compression and ETFs. We're talking the difference between 0.01 and 0.02% difference in fees between these funds. So... It's, it's all pretty close. So a four-holding portfolio, right. what's the typical internal expense ratio on something like that? Anywhere between uh, five basis points, 0.05% and say 0.1% because I have a core four ESG portfolio, which is a little more expensive. But still, under 10 BIPs is, is nothing. And that's Relatively where portfolio speaking. management is now. I mean, not portfolio management, but fund, the, the fund side is down to almost free and the trading side is down to almost free and that's where we are you if you wanted to do this yourself without any help the cost to you is de minimis and it's very it, has there ever been a better time in history to be an, an investor than the universe of options that exist to a savvy informed well-read uh investor these days has there ever been a better time uh I don't I mean guess, in terms I guess of we'll market think, I timing. I guess we'll find that out I don't mean in 10 in terms, years. <laughs> I don't mean in terms of market timing. Or, hey, sure, March 9th would have been a great yeah, time. Uh, to be absolutely. The, the, the fees are low. Uh, the the tons tra- of product tra- transparency is, is much, much better than it used to be. I mean, these fund companies now are just struggling trying to get assets in, and they're lowering their fees. So it's, it is a great time uh, to take advantage of that. But, you know, if you look at what the returns of the markets might be over the next 20 years— Squeezing out every basis point, I think, is going to help. Can't hurt, to say the Can't least, hurt. right? right. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else we didn't cover you want to talk about? Anything else you want to bring up that's worth discussing for our vast YouTube audience? No, I'm going to continue to uh, write. I have a new book coming out called The Education of an Index Investor. The and that'll education, be education. Are, are you playing off the education of a speculator? No, actually, I'm not. The yeah. Education of an Index Investor. Correct. And, and it just talks about the, the levels that people go through before they get to this sort of indexing nirvana of, okay, I not only, at one point you get it, but then you kind of complicate things to mess it up. And, right. then, it, and then there is another uh, epiphany, if you will, another aha moment that comes later that gets you back to something like a core force. That, so. that is the Dunning-Kruger uh, competency curve. There you go. Ex- that's exactly what it is. It's a perfect fit for it. And, uh, and then in addition to that, the book also covers the three basic necessities of being a good index and fund investor, which is having the philosophy, mm-hmm. creating the strategy for your particular need. Philosophy mm-hmm. is universal. Strategy is personal. And then having the discipline to stay the course, as Jack Bogle would say. The, the discipline is key. Behavior is key. Right. When the book comes out, you'll have to come by. We'll have another conversation about it, and we'll, we'll definitely uh, see if we can get some copies into the hands of, of various uh, readers. Well, thank you. Thanks, yeah. thanks for coming by, Rick. Mm-hmm. We have been talking to Rick Ferry uh, of Ferry's Investment Solutions and the upcoming in education of an index investor. Is that my close? You're perfect. Dead on. Um, <laughs> thanks for coming. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time here at the Compound.